I was about nine years old, the most vigorous woman I have ever known had a double lung transplant. That woman was my grandmother, Margaret Mortensen. She suffered from a breathtaking illness called emphysema for the entirety of my life up until that point. And even though she was in prison to the limited distance the oxygen tank would allow her, she was still the sunshine in my darkest corners, giving me all the love I could ever imagine and instilling in my tiny brain life lessons, helping me expand my outlook in a positive way. Six months before the dreadful emphysema was to claim her life, a bittersweet event happened. And I say bittersweet because a woman named Beth Johnson lost her life in a car accident. She gave the precious gift of two beautiful, breathable lungs to my grandmother, expanding her life from six months to 19 fulfilling years. My grandmother sprung into life. She hosted family reunions, went to see each and every one of her children and grandchildren miles and hours away. We had special moments like shopping trips or just hanging out at the park all day. She gave me wisdom and knowledge and the most important was to never let life slip by and make every moment count. And that's just what she did even in the hardest of times. I was 17 years old when I received two life sentences without parole. Outside the home of my grandmother, my life was too hard for me to understand. I ended up making irreversible choices, breaking everyone's hearts, including hers. She stayed by my side, though, showing me unconditional love and keeping me connected with the rest of my family. I soon realized what bondage my grandmother had went through before her transplant. True freedom is inside all of us. If you're never free in your own mind, you'll never break the chains in your life no matter what. Last April, she finally couldn't breathe anymore. She passed away with the rest of her family surrounding her. A couple months before this happened, I entered a dog program. A program here at NCCW where we take rescue dogs or puppies and we train them skills to go into the service program or emotional support. Never in my entire life had I ever been held responsible for another living being. I had to make sure this dog was fed, watered, and potty trained among the other necessities it takes to keep something alive. I loved it though. The huge responsibility gave me a reason to wake up every day and night. <laughs> <laughs> Had I not been in the dog program when my grandma passed away, I would have poured every ounce of grief on the rest of the institution. Not only going back to my careless, destructive ways before dogs, but shadowing every positive with darkness. I would be in segregation right now. I still had a responsibility my grandma was proud of. So I just went inside myself and I just focused on the dogs. I stopped talking to people unless I had to and I just isolated. And soon I realized all I had were my thoughts. So I listened to them and I observed the world around me and I realized it was bigger than I had made it. it expanded beyond the fences I ran around in. And I started looking at all of those around me and I just remember wishing if I could just save them from themselves, give them the courage to change and never come back here. I wanted to make a difference in the facility and the community around me. Then, a life-changing thought hit me. One of those knock-you-on-your-butt epiphanies. What if my real purpose is to never get out of prison, but change the way imprisoned women come in broken and leave mended. All I ever wanted to do was just get out of here, leave all this behind and never look back. That one thought changed my whole paradigm. I stopped living solely for my own outcome and I started living for those around me and I just, hundreds of ideas just poured through my mind. If we step outside ourselves for one second, the giant rat races rerun every day, we will soon realize all the time we waste. Living for the one thing we wish to achieve when we're so close to the end, we miss the point. 
the very purpose of our existence. All that missed opportunity that passes us by. On my grandma's second chance for freedom, she lived every moment for what it was, never letting chances to make the most of the very breath of air she had waste away. We could all learn from this, grasp at the happiness that's in front of our faces, seizing the day and remembering that when calamity strikes, nothing lasts forever. Take a deep breath. Keep moving forward. Strive to succeed and pass through the struggle. Today, I make the most of my life. I'm still in the dog program, and I just graduated from the Prison Fellowship Academy. I take every chance to learn and help everyone I can. I'm attempting to be more like Beth Johnson, a woman who selflessly gave even after life. I still follow my purpose to help strengthen my community, and I'm leaving my, future, my, leaving my future up to my higher power, God. Fate arises when we allow ourselves to slow down and let the world in around us. Let your ability to be happy and make every moment count bring you peace. Thank you. Woo!